Okay, hi everyone, uh, welcome to the next video. Today I will be talking about the um, use of order flow and market profile and volume profile when it comes to swing trading. You know, this is something I get asked uh, very often. You know, I know a lot of, lot of you don't trade full time and you don't have a time to uh, sit in front of charts, you know, whole day trading something like five minute chart or one minute chart or big charts. So uh, this this should kind of answer your question if you if you are focusing on you know holding tra trades more of a intra week um, you know executing trades at like hourly time frame you know 30 minute time frame or whatever uh, if it's something that you know you should add to your toolbox basically before we start the video uh, if you go to this link right here you know you can read the whole article that I published on a blog on the topic you know a while ago basically there are little more details more examples and whatnot if you go to the tradingroutecom slash bootcamp you can pick up the the course which covers both day trading and swing trading the way i do it you know shows all my kind of execution patterns uh what i pay attention to when it comes to you know both day trading and swing trading what markets i trade what platforms i use the templates and everything you will also get access to the free uh sorry to the uh private discord you know everything is just one time fee there are no monthly payments or anything and if you want to learn for free you can go to the tradingrad.com slash blog uh a lot of articles there i published over the last two years also on this youtube channel there is a lot of uh videos you know covering things that i do so definitely go check that out as well so before we start the video i think it's quite important to actually talk about both day trading and swing trading and how they differ because a lot of people tend to kind of don't understand this um first of all you know when it comes to day trading uh you are usually flat overnight this kind of a main characteristic of day trading is you know you you go to bed and you hold no positions um it is purely technical type of trading because you know the larger players and the events that influence the market over the long run and longer time time frames you know they don't happen every day basically so um within each day it's kind of a mo mostly people speculating you know you have people and algorithms just trading on day-to-day -day basis uh using mostly a technical analysis uh there is one difference to this there are people that trade uh macroeconomical events you know like uh fomc cpi all these type of macro releases basically uh they tend to trade on intraday basic basis it's very hard thing to do especially nowadays when you have algorithms and everything you know that are way faster when it comes to the execution uh but it's something worth to mention from my side as there is this kind of side of fundamental day trading i would say but you know 90 99 percent people i would say especially retail traders just use the technical analysis when it comes to day trading they don't care about uh you know larger macro outlooks uh they might just pay attention to the news in terms of like low low liquidity you know high volatility events basically but you know don't care at all what's what's kind of going on on a bigger scale uh one of the biggest arguments when it comes to day trading something that i talked about in the past is it's easier to predict the shorter moves you know same with life i know what i will be doing in the next five minutes uh i don't know what i will be doing in the next two weeks you know it's it's kind of a very similar thing when it comes to uh trading you know something that will happen probably intraday is easier to predict than you know month from now so so definitely that's that's one of the i would say biggest advantages of day trading and a lot of people are making a lot of money uh you know trading ta especially are more of these kind of a shorter term traders you know either if it's intraday or maybe a little bit like an intraweek you know holding trade maybe for one or two days basically where you have really this kind of edge uh especially when you are coming uh into the periods of there is there are like no news coming you know there is higher likelihood that nothing you know from like bigger fundamentals will influence the market and you will just take a trade that might play for like few days or few hours you know just like a purely technical thing uh trading the momentum for example or or something you know so so yeah uh this requires obviously more screen time if you if you are trading five minute chart you know you can can't really just like 
you know you have mostly like you have a sessions where you focus on trading you know either if it's us session london session or whatever you know and for these kind of a couple of hours um you need to be present and the same for more like a interweek approach you know if you execute trades on 30 minute chart or one like hourly chart you uh still kind of need to check the market let's say every hour you know how the candles closing what's what's been going on so definitely like more you get dialed in to the market the more uh time uh is required to to pay attention to so it's something that you really should kind of a understand basically i would say that for every every kind of a time frame you execute your trades you need to be able to check uh the market at least once that time frame candle close so for example if you use something like four hour time frame for your trade execution and you know levels and everything you know you should be checking that market every four hours basically once that candle close like what's been going on and so on and so forth you know obviously if you trade five minute chart it should be every five minutes um when it comes to day trading you have a higher risk of ruin um because obviously you know taking a five to ten trades every day you start making mistakes you know you lose two trades in a row you start to get greedy you want to make everything back very quickly you know there is very high likelihood that you will lose a lot of money uh within when it, when it comes to you know day trading and obviously it's due to the higher trade frequency on the other hand you know you will also make more money uh if you do things correct because obviously you know if you take if you just risk one percent and you trade on five minute chart let's say you know and you take like three trades a day you know 15 trades a week you make like five to ten r um something like you know something like that basically on 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 a weekly basis and you hit this kind of a good winning streak you know you will make much more money compared to if you just use like four hour time frame for execution which means like you will take one or two trades a week uh you know let's say like one of those trades will be losses you know you, 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 the swing trading basically takes much more time to kind of a build the account uh compared to day trading basically uh when it comes to swing trading you know longer term position holds this can be anything from interweek you know couple of weeks even couple of months moves are more fundamentally driven uh this is something that you know i always laugh when i see on twitter uh people you know posting something like weekly sr uh, level that results in in like a long term you know couple of week couple of month move uh acting like basically market move because you know it tested some level of support and resistance and you know kept moving for a couple of months obviously this is not how things work you know it's market react with within what's been happening in the world you know you have all these kind of risk on risk of uh, scenarios you know nowadays we had a huge sell-off in btc for example from 65k um down to 20k you know this didn't happen because we lost level of support on on a daily time frame or on a weekly time frame it's because of the inflation and everything has been going on so you have a bigger exposure to high impact events um this is this is something you know obviously if when you're holding trades for a longer period of time uh you are exposed to more unknown than it comes to you know day trading and these kind of shorter trades uh especially this kind of a interweek trading when people trade using something like 30 minute chart or 60 minute chart and you know you come come into the trade i have a chart here basically that shows it um you know here right here this is, i believe this was a cpi on on bitcoin you know you have still these kind of a huge candles when you are trading on 30 minute chart or 60 minute chart uh you still use kind of a relatively uh, smaller stop losses so it can get a little bit tricky obviously the higher you go based on the time frame you know if you trade something like daily or weekly uh you won't really notice these these kind of a high, high impact news you know fomc and whatever as your stops get bigger you know you there is a much kind of lower likelihood that you will get shaken out but by just a new news event but you know when it comes to like 60 minute charts 30 minute charts on you know, these wicks for example they really can kind of shake you out before the moves happen or whatever um traders must be mindful of the market uh correlations uh once again you know if you are day trading you are most likely 
trading one or two markets you know it's it's very hard to like trade one minute chart five minute chart and focusing on like 10 markets for example even when i when i day trade on a five minute chart you know i look at four markets uh but i know it's like the max i can do i and i cannot fo focus basically on anything else so definitely uh, you don't really battle too much when you are day trading with correlations because you are just trading one or two markets mostly but if you are swing trading and you obviously want to kind of maximize your returns because like i said you know swing traders tend to take like one or two trades a week compared to day traders that take one or two trades a day you know usually what people do is they will add more markets to be able to find more opportunities but also on the other hand you know if you if you for example you know buy uh btc uh if you buy you know eat uh if you buy you know sol at the same time you know because you get a setup on all of these three markets and you know you'll be like okay i'm risking one percent because you know i'm i'm being conservative with the trade uh all these three markets have very high correlation i would say above very close to like one to one above 90 percent of correlation so if you know the setup fails on bitcoin it's very likely to set up, uh, to fail on eth it's very likely to set, fail on, on soul and you know it will result of you losing three percent uh overall because you just took basically the same position just in uh three different markets that have very high correlation altogether you know if you are trading forex it's same like buying euro uh buying you know gbp you know going long in both dollar will pump you know both of these will lose uh at the same time the same thing you know buying es buying nq at the same time if one is going to lose the other will very likely to follow so uh even if you see my terrible terrible handwriting i hope you kind of understand uh the point here so you when you are swing trading you really should be aware of the correlations um more than uh day trading and swing trading overall requires less screen time you know like uh like one of my kind of a swing trading approach uh approaches that i use is very highly to uh tied to uh daily time frames so in theory i need to only look at market you know once a day uh at the daily close uh, but at the same time, you know, I am well aware that, you know, I might not see any kind of opportunity in the market for a whole week or a couple of weeks. And what people tend to do is, you know, they they start to kind of projecting the ideas that are not really there because they simply want to have some sort of market exposure. You know, they will get bored uh, or whatever. So w when you are swing trading, you know, you really have to be patient and what i also added here is this kind of a versatile trader and this is where you ideally want to be where the people that i know make a lot of money uh in trading you know tend to really excel and also where from my personal experience you know my trades that were the best uh the trades that made me like the most money came from is this kind of a um you are basically capitalizing on the kind of shorter term opportunities if you had time but you know when to kind of let go and let the trades run for the bigger swings you know uh i am watching trades uh every day i am happy to take small you know percentage moves here here and there but then i also want to be kind of aware where i have a bias from higher time frames and I feel like the market can run for a couple of days, maybe even a couple of weeks, and I will just then use the lower time frames to execute the trade, you know, to really get this kind of a higher risk to reward uh, trades, you know. But like I said, this this won't happen often. Uh, but when they happen, you know, you will you will you can get you know huge huge runners, and you 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 know your account will grow significantly. You know, I would say that these trades happen like i said you know maybe once a month maybe not even that but when they happen and when you are able to kind of nail them then you know this is like the best state you want to be in um but it requires obviously a lot of work a lot of patience and you know a lot of experience as well so 
Uh, I want to talk about here. Uh, this is the example of the versatile, versatile trader. This is also the example of the, the trade that I took uh, just a few days ago on BTC. Um, and I posted this on Twitter as well, uh, which I kind of included the screenshot here not to kind of <laughs> uh, boost my ego or whatever, just you know, so you can see that I actually like posted it and took the trade or whatever. Um, this was a Bitcoin, you know, higher time frames. This is a four hour chart and we basically had this kind of a huge failure uh, under this level of support here, you know, we pushed outside and then we had another failure right here, you know, we are at this kind of a bottom side of, of the distribution. There is a lot of these kind of a unfinished highs. This is like a, a very thin area in the market right here as well. So as we are kind of a taking out these lows right here, as we are keep rejecting, you know, showing some sort of strength and by looking at the lower time frames and I, when I see that, you know, there is a large amount of selling coming into the lows and these sellers are getting nowhere with the trade, I'm here using the, uh, the lower time frame execution, which basically came, I think this was like 21st on Friday, I believe, where we had this, this is, uh, the situation right here uh, i hope you can see it. this this last week before we actually pushed to the upside uh, we came to the low huge amount of selling you know trying to crack the level again and they just get you know uh rejected once again uh and this is basically in this kind of a, around this kind of close for some smaller lower time frame retest somewhere in this area i just took a long you know posted it on twitter as well and market moved nicely uh from the start of the week so these are once again the trades where i have a higher time frame bias but i'm not just going to you know like buy here with a huge stop uh because the thing is that if i would you know buy let's say here and i I would be like okay my stop you know i'm wrong if we're gonna go all the way down under this low you know and the trade would push to the upside here this is like two to one risk reward ratio which is nothing too too huge you know obviously it's it's like a normal trade uh although you know you will get a little bit more of cloud because you were able to catch this bigger <laughs> moving price but uh when it from like a pnl perspective from like a return of the trade perspective this is nothing you know to run home about but basically if i would take the trade with this order flow confluence here and you know i would get into in the trade which looks something like this and uh i think my stop actually to was under this low uh originally you know and then i uh let the trade run obviously above the highs you know this looks much much kind of better uh from the restore perspective so so uh something that you know com combination of lower time frames with higher time frames you know you will catch the winner like this, this is like i think like six to one or something like that um you know very nice trade all of a sudden basically so um the tools itself you know i will be talking about the three tools basically i spent Quite a bit of time just talking about <laughs> day trading and swing trading but, but when it comes to the tools uh the first one the dome and the heat maps uh this is super popular to use uh i would say this is more very much suited to day trading even scalping you know dome is really this kind of a scalping tool when you just really taking a couple of ticks you know staying in trades within a minutes i don't think there is a any sort of edge when it comes to uh, swing trading you have these blocks um, you have these blocks when you look at the dome you know you can see for example one right here um, you might want to use these as level of SR obviously if you follow me or if you have seen any other videos I am a little against these things because this is just the advertisement, you know, the people that putting these large orders in the order book, they might not even want to get them filled. So it can get very confusing for a lot of people and uh, very often basically what happens is that people will just put these walls into the books, you know, everyone starts to kind of sell ahead of them. So they, they will, they try to front run them. These people then, uh, 
fill all these shorts, you know, then pull the orders, market will just rally higher. So you have this kind of a spoofing going on. It's illegal in crypto, you know, happens every day, basically. So I'm not biggest fan of, of the heat maps. I'm not looking at them when it comes to swing trading. Uh, sorry, the dome uh, and the heat maps are basically the same. It's just visualization of of the order book and you can see for example right here uh, You had this kind of a sell wall sitting here market came in From this screenshot. I'm not 100% sure obviously, but it looks like it disappeared just before you know uh, just before we came through that you know, there is not such a huge pickup on Delta compared to how much uh, volume was sitting here basically so how much size was sitting here so this seems like a classic spoof where um, you know you have this kind of a block sitting here a uh, market is coming to it in this week and in this region right here people try to sell ahead of it once once the sellers you know here the fill all this uh, all this size long market pushes to the upside and this just kind of disappears and we continue higher so this is this is my kind of a beef with with the heat maps and with the dome and why I don't use it. I would say, like I said, you know, for scalping, the edge is there, you have a pulling and stacking, you have these kind of finish auctions on dome, but this is like super low time frame trading, not something that if you look for hourly time charts, I don't know, uh, not the thing that I would use. Volume and market profile, the auction market theory uh, concepts, you know, work and on all time frames basically. So this is more than fine to use. I use it all the time for swing trading. You can use daily, weekly, monthly, or composite profiles. The my favorite ones are the composite profiles. Um, it's not only because I can see these kind of values, but uh, it will also tell me where the volume by looking at basically where the volume was traded because if you would be just looking at the price action chart here something like this and you know we just had this big move to the upside uh, right here you know from the price action perspective by itself you know you might think that we have a SR here you know we have some sort of SR here uh, and you wouldn't be 100 or I, I don't want to say 100% because nothing in is 100% trading but you wouldn't be so sure like how market will basically behave once it's kind of breaks outside of this range and this is where the volume profile is super super useful because you will basically uh, see these distributions you will see this area of kind of a lower executed volume so you can say that once we break here the move to this upside should be very very quick and this is basically exactly what happened but this is very nice use of the volume profile where you just kind of a break outside of the value and this kind of a edge of this distribution and move to the other side very very quickly uh, because there is obviously a lack of volume uh, you can see how on this week, you know, once again, we very quickly move through these through these low volume vol low volume areas. But once we reaccept it inside the high volume node, came to the other side. You know, you have this kind of a uh, combination of both price section and the auction market theory. When you have the failure on the one side, because some people might think, okay, we are back at the resistance here, but you need to be looking at the left. You know, seeing that we just had this huge failure, the breakout is very likely to happen. And once breakout has happened, the run to basically this section right here is also very likely to happen you know this kind of a SR level right here and the likelihood of run being very quick uh, is basically due to the fact that very low volumes were executed in this section right there so uh, I love to use this thing you know the volume profile the market profile I don't, don't really use you know I'm not looking at like weekly market profile or monthly ma market profile to see uh, you know inefficiencies and distributions all I all I need is this kind of a big volume profile thing right here most people on Twitter I see they basically look at like points of control and using them as a level of SR this is probably the worst thing you can do because you know at the POC the most volume is traded market you know just by look at this thing right here you know market will be very choppy uh, during the time it trades at the POC so basically uh, rather than using this as SR, use this as a level where you don't want to be trading at all, basically. Uh, in exception where market is going to the thing with very high uh, momentum and, you know, high volume, then these things are good for fades. Um, 
the VWAP, same as the volume profile and auction market theory concepts. Uh, VWAP works on all time frames. Um, yeah, you can use daily, weekly, monthly, or anchored VWAPs uh, or rolling VWAPs. There's so many of them. Uh, I'm not using this too much on higher time frames, but it's completely fine. I know people that build their whole strategies around this. Uh, and VWAP we have both works as the dynamic SR level and also you can use this as the value area with the standard deviation bands. I don't have it in this video, it's on the blog post so you can go check that out or the previous videos where I talked about specifically about the VWAP but you can just see this is a monthly chart of Bitcoin uh, from I think a while back, I think a year ago uh, where you have basically a monthly VWAP, you know it's acting as a level of SR on, on kind of multiple occasions. If you will kind of a put it together with some sort of price action, let's say, you know, you will get once again, kind of nice confluence uh, for your trades. So the VWAP, super simple. It's like a moving average, basically, just a little more sophisticated as it kind of comes in the volume. Um, the footprint chart, this is when it comes to a little bit tricky. Uh, it's best suited for day trading, uh, but it's great uh, tool to use for intraweek trades as well for the execution confluence. I wouldn't use footprint on something like a daily time frame. That doesn't make sense to me. You will just get lost in the data. But also, you know, you will be using footprint mostly when it comes to swing trading to spot these types of distributions basically where you know you are you will be looking at where the most volumes are traded you know you will have this kind of a p-shape and b-shape uh, profiles you know on a footprint and it's just you know you could use like volume profile for candle and it would be very much the same by using footprint you can see that delta you know sometimes you will see like the huge delta on the at the lows, you know, that will give you some extra confluence, you know, you will be able to kind of see that buying and selling a little more detail. But uh, from like overall perspective, you know, you're just looking at where the most action is happening within the candle, because obviously if you have something like level of resistance, you know, we tested it here and then market came again, we pushed above and then you get this candle with this P-shaped distribution, you know, a lot of trading happening here, market is going under that, you know, you can see that people are trapped here, basically. Uh, I will show you this in a second. Um, and yeah, this is something that I mentioned. The first example here, this is actually day trading chart, you know, this is a tick chart uh, on booms. Uh, this is what you won't get when you are looking into uh, into swing trading, you know, obviously there is a little more when it comes to day trading, you know, you have these kind of finished auctions here, you have these large single blocks coming in, you know, overall on day trading, you will get a little more information. Uh, for swing trading, though, you just be looking at things like this. Uh, this is a delta ladder profile, not the ideal one, because it doesn't show the distribution as, as nicely. But you can see super simple stuff, you know, this is, I think, 30 minute chart or hourly chart. Um, prior level of support, we trade under that, there is a huge amount of selling coming in, you know, minus uh, 82 million delta, you can see the selling here lights up quite a bit, the next candle closes above the level, you still have a decent amount of the selling here in this kind of a left section of the candle, nice one to, uh, to look for a little bit of upside, you know, super simple stuff when it comes to footprint. Uh, the issue is if you'll be using like H4 time frame uh, or daily time frame, you know, these deltas, you know, they will get a little bit mixed up. You won't see these things in the details. From my experience, I don't go above 30 minutes chart. Uh, for example, something which is which you can experiment, experiment with is like using some sort of rotational uh, non time frame based candles basically and just kind of looking for like bigger rotations. Uh, that works fine as well. Or even if you are looking at the 30 minute chart uh, and use that for your execution, you still can use something like a bigger tick, tick based uh, footprint when you will just get like more candles, you know, under under these under this level of support and you will see that selling 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 coming in and then you know they will get stuck you know you will get under that bigger sell block you know and you still trade 30 minute chart but you know with just little little more detail basically uh the second example you know for the continuation as well 
kind of a same thing. You flip the level of SR. Uh, first of all, you have this kind of a initiation in this candle right here with most buying happening in this down section right there. So uh, this is one of the better examples where you know the buyers actually stepped in under the under the level here. Once we come back for the retest, they want to be defending their entries. We come here, you have a attempt on selling in this section right there. Market pushes higher basically for the continuation. So uh, footprint chart is completely fine to use. You just need to be looking at it from like more of a overall distribution where the action is taking place type of perspective rather than, you know, zooming in and looking at each of these, you know, uh, bid and ask basically uh, prices at each level and looking for like imbalances and finished auctions or whatever you know you will you will completely miss that on the tournament chart but like i said there is definitely a edge in this thing uh, when it comes to higher time frames and i use it you know all the time when i execute swing trades in conclusion when it comes to swing trading using volume tools and order flow is completely fine unless uh, when you understand you know how market microstructure works how market dynamics works and all these different things you can read articles about them in on in my blog or you know uh or see the youtube videos but yeah i love to use these things even when it comes to swing trading they they work very well for me um one thing i would say you know there are other tools like cvd uh open interest and things like that i don't personally use them i have a video on this channel talking about why i don't think cvd is actually a useful indicator when it comes to swing trading it can be kind of confusing even in day trading as well so i don't use that uh, open interest i never really used it to extend i can talk about it you know with some any sort of confidence so not my thing to use i know a lot of people love to use it i just don't use it uh swing traders should pay attention to macroeconomical macroeconomical events and sudden changes of condition when new information enters the market obviously like i said you know if if you if you are you know holding long from level of support basically and uh you are in a trade for a couple of days and then we come to some sort of level of resistance you have cpi data you know there is a inflation in increase or whatever you know you should you should really reconsider if if this trade is a good idea you know very simple as that but a lot of people tend to kind of disregard the uh, the fundamental analysis completely because you know they they just kind of you know I don't know, like act as technical analysis, everything is not obvious. The market on a higher scale doesn't move based on a TA. Uh, so yeah, and the best trades are those that use higher time frame bias with lower time frame execution. I think I covered this uh, enough in this video. You know, picking solid levels on a daily chart, you know, uh, or four hour chart, the weekly chart, whatever, where you can really see this kind of a prolonged move in the market and then just kind of nailing down your entry on 30 minute time frame, or even five minute time frame if, if you have time to do that. You know, you can really get these kind of a swing positions which you will hold a couple of days. You know, if you get in just in the right time, you will have a tight stop, you know, your, your account will grow significantly just you need to be patient you need to understand that this won't happen every day basically um that's it for the video here you have a two articles that kind of cover the concept this is the main article i use for this video and this is all also a little bit of a difference between swing trading and day trading but i think i covered that enough in the video and once again if you want to learn how i trade if you want to join private discord if you want to get uh some updates coming as well um you can pick up the bootcamp, it's just one time fee and you have a lifetime access for that. Thank you guys for your attention and I will see you with the next video.